All right, so I'm back from the seminar and let me continue to record the lecture video. Uh, so in the previous video, we talked about expenditure minimization problem. And then we derive the expenditure function from the uh, that EMP. So remember, expenditure function is the value function from that problem. So it tells us the uh, minimum expenditure necessary for attaining a certain level of utility uh, given price factor. Yeah. All right, so uh, in this video, what I'm, what I'm going to do, so now we are going to make use of those properties of expenditure function to drive properties of Hicksian demand. Okay? Remember, Hicksian demand is a solution to uh, the EMP. So it tells us the uh, optimal demand schedule. So it tells us the, uh, the way of minimizing cost, way of minimizing expenditure, uh, you know, to obtain a certain level of utility given price factor P. Right? So it, it tells us the demand schedule, optimal demand is cost minimizing demand schedule. All right, so now we are going to, so we are going to discuss some properties of Hicksian demand, and that is displayed by this proposition, right? Now this proposition tells us two major properties of Hicksian demand. First, uh, suppose that Hicksian demand function is differentiable in price factor. Okay, so the Hicksian demand is differentiable uh, with the first argument price factor and then we can think of it as derivative right because this P is a L dimensional vector so it collect it is a collection of the uh, mm, price of every commodity so in case of L commodities this is a L dimensional vector and H is another L dimensional vector demand or uh, it tells us the Hicksian demand for each good okay so the derivative is going to be L by L derivative matrix. So in the first row, uh, we have a Hicksian demand for a good one with respect to each price. Okay, so price one, or price of a good one and price of a good two, and so on. In the second row, uh, we collect the Hicksian demand for a good two uh, with respect to each price. Okay, and so on. Yeah. So in case of two commodities, then P is going to be P1 and P2, and this vector H is going to be H1 and H2, right? So the derivative matrix is going to be two by two matrix. Okay. So the first property of Hicksian demand is concerned about the you know this derivative matrix, and it can be shown that this derivative matrix is a symmetric and negative semi-definite matrix. So symmetric means, uh, so we say matrix A is a symmetric, okay? To discuss symmetry, a matrix has to be a square matrix. So the number of rows and number of columns are, should be equal to each other. Now suppose that A is an M by N matrix, and we say that it is symmetric if a uh, is uh, IJ entry, so the entry in the uh, in the i row and the jth column, okay, is equal to a sub j i, okay. So even if we switch the low end column, it's the same. The entries are the same, okay. So in this L by L matrix, uh, if this so this matrix is symmetric if these two entries are equal to each other and these two, right, and these two. Okay, and so on. All right. Good. And then is a negative semi-definite, and we have one more property. So for every non-zero price vector, if we multiply this L by L matrix by the price vector, okay. So it's the you know multiplication by so multiplication between one matrix and one vector and think about the dimension issue all right so it is well defined uh, so the product is going to be l by one uh, vector okay and you know its value should be zero vector okay? so in this last video uh, we are going to prove this say uh, two properties and the proof is a uh, you know quite immediate from the properties of expenditure function, okay? 
so this video is, a, is going to be really short and let me call it the uh, end of this week so I was initially I was planning to cover duality as well the relationship between EMP and UMP okay uh, from that we can derive the uh, uh, most important equation in consumer theory that is a Slusk equation but uh, I think that is beyond my time and beyond my ability yeah? so let me postpone that you know the last topic of the uh, classic consumer theory to the next week yeah? that means because we have additional topics on consumer theory like a uh, uh, liberty preference or aggregate demand and other applications so we uh, may have to spend one more week uh, we have to play with this classic consumer theory one more week uh, but yeah, I couldn't help it okay all right so in this last video uh, we are going to prove the uh, so we are going to establish these two properties of uh, Hicksian demand right? and that is pretty easy okay first if we think about the derivative matrix of Hicksian demand uh, that is a Hessian matrix so second order derivative matrix of expenditure function okay and remember that it is immediate from Sheffield lemma you know, Sheffield lemma tells us uh, if we take the derivative of expenditure function with respect to PL then we obtain Hicksian demand right so the derivative of Hicksian demand is a second order derivative of expenditure function right so this L by L matrix is going to be a second order derivative matrix in other words has your matrix of uh, expand expenditure function with respect to the price all right and then we know that expenditure function is concave uh, with respect to the price right so it's a Hessian matrix must be negative semi-definite right so due to the equivalence between these two matrices these two matrices uh, so the negative semi-definiteness of this matrix D Hicksian uh, matrix derivative matrix of Hicksian uh, is you know uh, immediate consequence from the uh, from the fact that expenditure function is a concave function okay so that is cool so the first result the first property is done now the uh, to see the symmetry of this matrix okay and think about the uh, you know you know uh, two commodity case okay and then uh, you know this derivative matrix is going to be h1 over p1 and h1 over p2 and h2 over p1 and h2 over p2 so it's going to be this 2 by 2 matrix all right and for a symmetry we have to show that these two off diagonal entries are equal to each other right then but h1 is the derivative of the expenditure function with respect to p1 all right and we take that derivative and take the partial uh, one more time with respect to p2 all right so this is going to be cross partial uh, of the expenditure function with respect to p1 and p2 okay and likewise if we think about the you know another di off diagonal entry and this guy is cross partial of the expenditure function with respect to p2 and p1 okay but when we compute cross partial you know the order of differentiation does not matter right and that is guaranteed by young's theorem so the theorem states that you know the order of differentiation does not matter uh, when we compute uh, cross partial right so Young's theorem guarantees that you know these two off diagonal entries are equal to each other. Okay, so that establishes the uh, symmetry of the derivative matrix of Hicksian demand. Okay, so we are going to discuss several implications of this, you know, negative semi-definite or uh, negative semi-definiteness. Uh, it 
leads to very important theorem of law of demand okay and then um, so yeah we are going to discuss that in the next video okay and then let me let me finish this video uh, with the proof of the last property uh, so you know the derivative matrix times price vector should be a uh, zero vector all right and then it is from the fact that Hicksian demand is homogeneous of a degree zero or uh, this is typo it should be Hicksian demand is homogeneous of a degree zero in the price vector only not u okay so in p okay and the Euler's formula okay and remember that um okay so yeah, um all right um uh, think about the uh, so think about the solution to this emp uh, p dot x we want to minimize this quantity uh, given this constraint all right so solution to this problem is Hicksian demand all right and then think about h of alpha p comma u right that is the solution to u solution to this problem minimum of alpha p dot x given u of x is higher than u all right and then if we compare these two Hicksian demands uh, you may be able able to realize that there is a essentially there is a no difference because the second problem is a scalar multiple of the first okay so if we so if we figure out so if we attempt to figure out the solution to this problem we may disregard this alpha first okay because this alpha is just a scalar multiple all right and then after you know after disregarding this alpha there is a no difference between these two so the solution to this problem multiple the problem is the same as the solution to the original problem okay so from that from this simple observation uh, we can see that Hicksian demand is homogeneous of a degree zero in the price vector okay mm. all right then applying the Euler's formula okay homogeneous of degree zero means all uh, you know the derivative of this Hicksian demand so dp h dot p is going to be zero okay? so we obtain the last property and then let me just mention uh, one takeaway from this uh, property all right so you know this property tells us uh, every commodity has at least one substitute So every commodity has at least one substitute. That is an implication of this property. Uh, to see this, uh, so suppose that there are two commodities, then you know this is uh, so in case of two commodities two commodities all right this property tells us this property tells us okay h1 p1 h1 p2 and h2 over p1 and h2 or p2 all right and then we multiply by p1 and p2 okay then we obtain so that is let me call this uh so let me call each entry of this matrix this is h1 1 this is h1 2 and h2 1 and h2 2 okay so after multiplication of these two matrices we obtain 
H11, P1, H12, P2, all right? And in the second row, we have H21, P1, H22, P2, okay? And those two are equal to zeros, all right? So if we think about the, you know, this relation, yeah? H one one P one H one two P two that is zero. Okay. And then we're gonna so we're gonna uh, so we're gonna see a little bit more about the sign of this derivative. Okay, that is related to a uh, substitution effect in the Slutsky equation, and it can be shown that this is always negative. Okay, this is always negative. Okay. And the P1 and P2 are positive, right? So to satisfy this equation, H12, right? So that measures responsiveness of the Higgs and demand for good one uh, to a, a change in the price of good two. Okay, so it's more like a, a you know, the cross substitution effect between these two commodities and it should be positive okay so if h sub 1 2 are positive okay if that quantity is positive we say that good 2 sorry good 1 is a substitute of good 2 okay so that means if p2 increases the demand for good 1 Hicksian demand for good 1 increases okay so uh, the demand for one good and the demand or uh, price of the other good uh, move in the same direction. So that is a uh, consistent with the, with the definition of a substitute. Yeah? So, uh, all right. So in that sense, good one is a substitute of good two. Uh, in case of the three goods, we are going to have this one: H11 P1, H12 P2 and the h13 p3 that should be equal to zero all right which means we know that this is uh, this is negative okay so to satisfy this equation at least one derivative must be positive okay so good one is a substitute of good two or should be a substitute of good three okay so for this reason you know the last property suggests that uh, every good has at least one substitute. All right. So as I told you, this is going to be the last video. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm planning to take one supplementary video regarding uh, envelope theorem. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed the series of video this week, and we are going to discuss a little bit more about this UMP and EMP by going through some exercises uh, in the live lecture next week. I uh, hope you guys had a, had a have a great weekend.